Welcome everybody to episode three in our Node.js series. If you made it through episode number two, great, because we basically just drank from the fire hose. We started by creating a little server, and if you've never done any JavaScript, the code looked something like this and might have been a little bit overwhelming. But in this one, we're going to kind of start fresh. We're not going to need any of this code, so don't feel like typing it out if you're just jumping in. This video, we're going to learn how to initialize a node project, which will allow us to have dependencies and various other things to build a more complex application instead of just having a single file like app.js. We'll also learn soon how to create more rapid changes so we don't have to constantly stop our server and start it and just make things a lot better. This video is sponsored by Filestack, which is a convenient API to upload, transform, and deliver image files and other file types in your app with easy URL-based transformations. So looking through here, you could pass in different options to automatically change the structure of an image, as well as convert documents from type to type. Check them out, I'll drop a link down below. So from our terminal, we are going to clear the screen. And you can say NPM, which is Node Package Manager. This is included with Node installed on your computer. And then you can say init. And there's an option we can pass in, which is dash Y, which will make it faster. But just go with this one for now, uh, just so I can show you what will happen. After some time, this pops up asking for the package name. And basically, if you use dash Y after NPM init, it'll do the default for all of these values. So the package name default is documents because that is the directory that we are currently in. The folder that we're in is documents. So what I want to do is I want to actually cancel out of this with control C. And what I want to do is I want to make a directory. You can do that with MKDIR and we will call this whatever our project is going to be about. Let's call it customers. So let's go ahead and make an application for customers and I'll scoot this over a little bit. So we can see. So that created that directory and now we can change directory into customers. And here is where we are going to initialize our project. So npm init and now the default should be customers. So package name customers, that looks good. Version, description, entry point index.js. You could keep it as that or you could rename it such as app.js. Ignore the test command, ignore git repository for now and basically just going to keep the default. And it shows a preview of what that settings setup is going to look like. And this is all going to be put within a package.json file. So JSON is just a data format where it's key colon value, so key value pairs. And yeah, this looks good to me. I will go ahead and hit enter for yes. However, if you decided to just go with all the defaults and not rename, any things, for example, I change it from index to app, you could just say npm init and then pass in the option dash y and then I'll just go with all the defaults and save some time. But since I already did that, we will just keep it as is. So what we have now is inside of documents, we have a folder of customers and inside of here, we're going to have just a package.json file. And what we can do is we can actually open this folder inside of ultra edit, so show more options or just navigate to this folder with whatever editor you were using. So we'll open this folder. And now I have this open over here on the left in this file explorer. So the package.json, it's going to look like this, where we have all those things we defined inside of this file. And this is basically a way to say, hey, this folder that we're working in is a project. If you're going to share this project with anyone, then you're going to want to send them this whole folder. And we're going to talk about how to upload it to version control and everything like that. Now you can actually change this file if you decide you want to change one of these values, no big deal. So I will often put my JavaScript files inside of a source directory. And I forgot to set that in the entry point when we set up the application. So no big deal, we can just change our package.json and save. And what this means is we should create this app.js inside of a source folder. So we can add a new folder, call it source. And inside of the source folder, we can create a new file calling this app.js. Now in this file, let's just do a very basic thing like console log. And in here we will say hello world. So the goal is to be able to run this. So we can define different run commands in this scripts section of our package.json. 
So one of the commands is test, which currently just says no tests specified. So this isn't very useful unless we are doing some testing. So I'm just going to remove it. And instead what we're going to do is create a start command, which is pretty common. You can call it whatever you want. So that's going to be inside of quotes there. And then inside of quotes here, we will say node source dash app dot js and save. Now to execute this, what we'll do is we will say, let me uh, actually clear this off. We'll say npm run and then whatever our command for our script is, which in our case is start. It'll eventually say what command we're issuing and give us the response, hello world. So that is how you will set up a project and create an entry point for application and create a command to start. So whenever you download a new node project, if you are cloning one from GitHub or whatever it may be, you will most likely want to check the package.json, check the scripts, see what the command is to run it. Most likely it's start or something very similar. And that is how you're going to run the project. You can create multiple variations. So you could have a start and then you could have a dev start if you wanted to do things a little bit different in a development environment. But for now, we're just going to need one. In the next video, we're going to talk about basic dependencies. This will allow us to bring in software that other people have written into our project to save us time and to be able to do new things. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm looking forward to it. Peace out.